Good morning, cultists. Welcome back to another Unbalanced Breakfast with Cthulhu's. All right, so in the last episode, um, Fabrosi made out with a Dora Dor Dorothy, um, the, I guess, disguised spider, la spider lady or whatever. Um, I don't exactly know. And then he... What the hell did we get? We got the talent Spider's Kiss, which reduces our constitution but increases our strength. Which is not exactly what I wanted, um, because we need Fabrosi to be super tough, but, uh, so be it. So we are in what appears to be a, uh, an underground crack den, um, and I guess we're just gonna talk to people and find out what the dealio is, because, I don't know, um, it's about all I th can think of doing right now. I think there's also a fight pit in the back, maybe we can participate in, but, um, what about this guy? Ganga? Excuse me? Ganga? To your own nightmares, I pray you tend. Amid smoke and shadow, I must foster my own. Uh, good for you. And what's happening to your body, man? Are you peeling off bits of your skin and eating it or something? Or is that just your weird lizard markings? Eh, whatever. It doesn't really matter. Alright, uh, let's explore the rest of this place. What is this? Is that like a raised platform? Maybe? Let's figure it out. It is. What does it do? That's the real question. Okay, so it's weight activated. Maybe... We can get in here somehow? Because there appears to be some stuff over here. I don't exactly know how to get there, though. What exactly does this do? Do we know? I am unaware. Um, Aran the raucous one. Do we talk to him? Oh, maybe it's, um... You know what? Faint, why don't you try... Go activating that one now. That Fabrosi's, uh, got the other one activated. Maybe it needs to be one of those, like... Oh, need to press down on it simultaneously nonsenses. Something did work. Oh, look! It's working! It worked! Holy shit! Okay, so if we get off this now... Will it deactivate? Okay, it will. Got it. Fine. Um... I think then Losa and Sabil, you guys are gonna have to, uh... Explore it on your own. There you go, Losa. You take charge for a second. Don't get too comfortable with Sabil. Once you guys are alone in there, she might show to uh, shank you or something. And I don't think that chest is locked. Got some gold. Fantastic. Skeleton. Some more gold. Send that over to Fabrosi. Also, you might as well send the money over to Fabrosi now. There you go. What's in this chest? Not a severed head, unfortunately. Fane, you got that piece of mind scroll in Fabrosi, since you've got that stack of arrows. A bloodied bowl. Huh. Maybe we'll send that to Fabrosi. What about the ceremonial dagger? We'll send that to Fabrosi as well. Light the candles. Make it really atmospheric in here, maybe. Maybe that'll summon, um, Cthulhu or something. And then we can tell him to, I don't know, uh, look! Point curse! Oh my god, did I just do that? What the fuck? I just said point curse. Oh my god. A coin purse. Ah, oh, jeez. <laughs> Shit. Alright, Fane, come back to us. Rosie, you can start leading the team again. Alright, um, Aran, the raucous one. Connell, the boastful one. I'm assuming this is going to be another pit fight. Um, are we ready to deal with these guys? They are level 10, level 9. We are level 10. Maybe we should do this fight pit stuff when we've leveled up a little bit more. I'm not feeling too, too confident in our abilities to uh, withstand a royal beatdown. Considering that what I assume to be the participants are around uh, level 10-ish. Now, what are these guys? Bont, Marla, Cade, Lohar. Interesting. Boss is busy. Uh... Ask who the boss is? Lohar, you've been living under a boulder. Say you're... I think we've heard of him, actually. Um, say we're here on business. Good. Boss could use some good news. Okay. So, don't waste his time. These are explosive times. Be respectful. Sure. Oh, 
Not gonna lie, man, I kind of like your armor. It looks pretty spiffy, but a little wasted on a, a dwarf. Okay, these guys appear to be reenacting, um, well, 90% of the scenes from Sopranos. Fantastic, let's do it. Marla? What's wrong with you? I brought you up from girl to woman, Marla. Like you was my own. This. He lifts his right arm, showing a white bandage beneath his ribs. A wet red spot shows through. This ain't the thanks I expected. Who sent you? Um, what are you wearing on your head? Is that... That's not a wolf. Is it a... Is it a rat? Did you skin a skaven? Or is that a badger? Are you wearing a badger on your head? Look, unless it's a honey badger, not quite as badass as you think it is. The formidable dwarf slams his fist on the side table. You hear a loud crack. Is that like his hand bones cracking? Enough! Do you know they killed Anna? Do ya? Start talking sense or I'll take that tongue right out of your mouth and fry it for supper. Uh, let's just stay quiet. I don't want to get involved. Bart, Kate, get her to talk or bleed her out. She ain't one of mine anymore. His sneer travels from the restrained dwarf to you. And you. Yes. You better have a damn good reason for coming here. Uh, that's it. We're just going to end the conversation that way. All right. Fantastic. Hey, uh, is this a glass of... No, that's a glass of wine. What the shit, man? Can't you have, like, a nice glass of blood for me? You're Come on. Brave lad. All sitting here now. Yeah, that's me. I hope for your sake you've got good news for me. Um, gestures to the dwarf at the front of the room and ask what happened between them. Fib that Master Meister Siva sent you said that she might be able to help you. Um, why? Is he a sorcerer? Tell him that sounds like a threat. He wouldn't like to feel- He wouldn't like you when you're feeling threatened. <laughs> Say he may depending on what he's interested in, but there are things you want to know too. Uh, let's find out what's happening between him and the dwarf. Family matter. She's one of mine. Acting like her brain's a scrambled though. Came after me with a knife. Maybe she is scrambled. Lucky for me, she caught an old wound. Scar slowed down the knife. So, how'd you make it out of Fort Joy? Ask how he knows about that. You made it past plenty of magisters undetected. Smile broadly. Um, okay. And regale him with a tail. Hmm. Let's ask how he knows that. I've got people. They've got people. People talk. The Magisters never shut up long enough to listen. Fair enough. But me, I love a good story. Here's one I heard lately. A group of strangers landed on the beaches outside town. Meister Seavers people. You one of her little seekers? Chasing down Godwoken and begging them to save us all. Hmm, tell him you're one such Godwoken he can start begging any time. <laughs> Note that he doesn't sound convinced of their cause. All just been telling us all kinds of this and that about Godwoken. Haven't seen any evidence of him myself. So no, I'm not convinced. Hmm. See, you can't blame him for all the Order's bluster. Things are only getting worse. Uh, sure. Let's not sell him information that we're Godwoken or anything. We're swirling the drain. If someone doesn't plug it, we'll slip down easy as you please. So, what do you want? Um, ask him if he knows why you're here. Reckon I do. Knowing Sifa, she sent you looking for sorcerers, I bet. I could help you. But last I heard, you was working for the Magisters. Big shots at the boats. Now, why in the name of all the Earths would I help a worm like that? Oh, wait. I'm helping them? Uh, I'm just trying to find their, uh... Missing magisters and shit, that's it. Uh, say you serve yourself first in this and in everything. Ah, oh, we succeeded, yes! An unpleasant smirk twitches around the corners of his mouth. Right. I reckon I could help you out. Depending on what you can do for me. Um, tell him that unless he wants this realm to be consumed by the void, he ought to tell you what you need to know. Um, sure. L let's see what he has in mind. He gestures towards the bandage across his side. Had a bit of family trouble lately. My girl Marla got it in her head to come after me with a short blade. 
What is it a blade cuz she was wielding it? Is that why it's a short blade? That ain't like Marla. Ain't like her to pull the silent treatment either. Something's going on. Yeah, it's what I've been telling you. And wouldn't you know it, that blade she used wasn't any normal bit of steel. Belonged to another of my people. Guy's name is Mordus. Bit of a loner, but smart as hell. I sent a few guys to go check on him. See if he knew what had got into Marla, but no one can find him. I'd like a word with the guy. See, that sounds reasonable. Ask where you should start. Ask if he expects Mortis to survive that particular conversation. That'd be up to him, wouldn't it? No one's seen him in a good few. I've got some people checking out his house near the tavern now, though. Tell them I sent you, and they'll let you know what they've found. Truth is, they might be glad to see you. Reckon a sorcerer will have better luck finding one of their own. Mm, ask if there's something else you should know. Well, like I said, Maldus is a special guy. A sorcerer, matter of fact. Maybe even one of the ones Seavers after. If there's something you want to find out from him, you might want to ask before I have my word with him. Here, you can take this off my hands. More suited to your kind, really. Whoa, whoa, what do you mean, my kind? Good luck. Whoa, dude, we ain't done with our conversation, though. Better get out there before Maldus makes it all the way past Ark. Okay, uh, something more to discuss all with right. you. Um, ask him exactly what he does in Driftwood. Tell him you came across a wrecked caravan outside of town. Save her, there have been a string of murders against magisters in Driftwood and ask him if he knows anything about it. Don't insult me. I wouldn't expose my people like that. But if you find out who did it, shake their hand for me. Fair enough, let's ask him about the caravan. That's right. Lost one of my best lads, Anhar. Didn't get Jalia's body back though. Maybe one of them beasts took her like they did the sorcerers. Say you met her there. She survived, but she seemed, she, but seemed traumatized. She ran off. That's, well, I reckon that's good news. P poor thing. She'll be back in time. She and Anhar were sweethearts. And ask why he doesn't go collect the dead bodies. We will. Once the Reds turn down the alarm a bit. They're jumpy as all hell for the moment. Won't do anyone any good to raise a ruckus now. All right, fine. Uh, what are you doing, Driftwood? Whatever needs doing. Isn't that obvious? Uh, well... Come, I mean, I don't know. Is this a prison cell? Oh, it's where they harvest the Drudne... Drudne addict. <laughs> Are they just sniffing those? That's funny. Okay, fine. So we can't go in there. Not yet, anyways. Is there anything else to explore down here besides the arena? I... I mean, I guess we might as well see... What's around here? Um, maybe we can s actually get a proper gauge of the level of the contestants in the arena. Because I'm not quite sure if they are actually a level 10 or not. Level 9, Krisha. Oh, the name Krisha sounds really familiar because uh, it's a common name in uh, Shadow of War. And what the shit? What the fuck? Force field, keeping it inside. Okay. Um, how do we interact? What exactly happens? Who in their right mind would keep a void woken locked up like this? Uh huh. All right. Fair enough. I guess maybe part of the fight involves a royal rumble with a void woken. Can we see what level it is before I um, decide to participate or not? Um, no. There appears to be no way of finding out. I did uh, manage to uh, teleport myself inside of it, but can I lockpick this? No, can't be picked. So why did you even try, Fabrosi? Why did you even try if you knew you couldn't do it? What the hell, man? Good grief. All right, let's get the hell out of here. Let's get back to the square of driftwood. Um, and I think we need to do a little bit more exploring on round driftwood. This guy is uh, selling fish, I'm assuming. And Trader Haran. I want to trade. Aha! Uh -huh. Interesting. You can get some sweet, sweet warfare skills. Fantastic. Phoenix dive, I think that might be useful. 
considering that I've seen the enemies use it, like, every other, uh, turn. Smash, oh no. Maybe we should have held off until, oh man. <laughs> Shit. When the hell did I buy this? Crap, I don't remember when I bought that. The Axis of Evil. Oh, I remember, it was from the uh, tavern. Dang, Nabbit. Defenders, Greaves. Shit. We should try to replace our current gear with some of this stuff. Yeah, ah, shit, burglar. Okay, um, Rowan? Get out of here. You've got nothing important to say to me. Town Crier? Good grief, I'm right in front of you. There's no need to yell. Many a latest, my friend. The war, the bishop, the queen. What tickles your fancy? Uh, what about the war? I ain't looking too good for them lizards. Word is, the divine order's gonna win the ancient empire and hit it hard. You remember what happened to the elves, don't you? Ain't no one left standing when you treat them to death, Bog. Uh, tell me about the fate of the bishop. Seven, save us. Stabbed in the back he was by them vile, low-born, treacherous seekers. Kill them all, I say. Do them like Magister Raymond did, old Lady Seaver. That'll teach them traitors. I mean, they doomed us all, didn't they? The Son of the Divine is dead. Gone. Who'll save us now? Uh, you're looking right at him. I know he doesn't look like much. Um, I know he looks like a filthy degenerate. And he is. But he may be your last uh, hope. Tell me one more. Hear more about the queen. Jolly Justinia, queen of the dwarves. Ha! Scourge, more like. Here's twenty or so noble gentlemen. No one knows what they did wrong, if anything, and she has them stripped and whipped all the way to the execution grounds. Didn't even give them the dignity of the sword. No, sir. Had them all up, real slow. Life. Okay, um, I get the feeling that this is a bit of a very biased news source. You ask me, and I say she's mad as a mink with its tail on fire. Queen or no queen? Yeah, it definitely seems a little biased. Alright, well, uh, that was very uninformative. Um, I believe we still need to find some dwarf that is... Um, hiding somewhere, maybe. Oh, kids, what are you doing? Hello, mister. Yeah? The little boy looks at you. He picks his nose. You disgusting little shit. You be careful. My daddy's a magister. Yeah, well, I've killed a cu- I mean, I just witnessed a couple of magisters die. Uh, maybe your dad was one of them? No, he's not. His daddy's a fisherman like most daddies around here. Tell him that's nothing. Your daddy's a god. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Ask them what to expect to see staring at the water. We're waiting for our friend. He went for a swim. He'll be back soon. And who's that? He went swimming all the way to Fort Happy. Uh, you mean Fort Joy? Fort Joy? That's what I said. Fort Joy. He's gonna find his mum and bring her back. Ask if their friend's name was... Is... Joe. Cool. How did you know that? Oh, I remember the, uh body part that we found from the shark. Mister, have you seen our friend Joe? Tell them the truth about Joe. They have to grow up sometime. Well, I gotta say, I've never expected to hear Fane say the word Joe, but sure. The truth hurts, but they'll get over it. Kids are resilient. Tell them the truth. Okay, so I get the feeling that these guys want me to tell the truth. Alright, uh, kids, it's time you heard the truth. So here's the thing. Joe was eaten by a shark. Don't worry, kids. I'm sure your buddy Joe is just fine, hanging out with his mother in Fort Joy. Kids, Joe is dead. Joe has bitten the bucket. Joe has passed on to the great beyond. He has joined the choir invisible. Um, Joe is deader than a uh, dodo's uh, doornail on, on a disco. He's dead. The horror grows on their little faces. Yeah. That's a horrible thing to say. I bet it wasn't Joe. I bet it was someone else's leg in that icky shark. She bursts into tears, then looks from you to her and back again, then starts crying too. Neil, hug both the children to you. Tell them it's gonna be alright. Pat the children gently on the head. 
Kneel down, lift the little boy's chin towards you. Tell him death isn't so bad. Let's do it. Let's tell him death isn't so bad to a little kid. After a moment, the crying subsides. Ben and Harriet snuggle into you. Uh, I didn't offer to hug them. You're cold. So where's Joe? Tell him Joe's gone. Somewhere lovely. A farm or something like that. Tell him he's nice and warm in the belly of a shark, then walk away. <laughs> Ah, uh, maybe Debris would do this, but Fabrosi, I don't know. I guess he's a little kind at heart, but I mean, he is a degenerate, so. <laughs> uh, let's just, you know what? Sure, let's just be nice to them. They look puzzled, but the little boy seems to accept the idea. I think we should go home. Come on, Ben. Thank you, mister. Bye -bye. That's right. Bye -bye, mister. Joe's dead. Don't he forget, kids. Away. Still children, but now somehow older than before. That's right. He's super dead. Remember, he's deader than a uh, dodo's disco doornail. Um, bow, dagger. Come on, this is all rubbish. The fuck? Fine, I'll take this elven bow and sell the hell out of it. Good grief. Fish rack. Got anything for me? Poison fish. Lovely. Got some more poison fish. I love it. And now Fabrosi stinks. What else is new? What about this fish pile? Yes, more free fish. Empty barrel and empty pile of fish. I don't understand how it's an empty pile of fish, but fair enough. Okay, uh, where do we find the dwarf that was... The missing magisters. Um, they said we should look for Higba. That's it, Higba. Hey, doggy? You know Higba? The dog barks at the sand built up beneath the building. Um, tell it that it's a good dog. You're nice, and I'm a good dog. Yes, I am. Uh, what are you barking at? There's something not right, and that's wrong. It's under the house thing there, and it's bad. I can smell it. Hmm. Tell it you trust its instincts. You look into it. You be careful now. What's under there smells real bad. It smells evil. Worse than Fabrosi? You sure about that, man? Sure about that? Alright, well, apparently we should watch out for... Driftwood Fishworks. Driftwood Fishworks. Great. I don't care if it tells Whoa. plays a part plank by plank. We've any we'll seen so him. much as a rat's hair out of place. You tell the Magisters. Okay. Uh, hey guys, you what are you doing here? Me. Have you seen a man acting suspiciously near here? Grey cloak, grey beard, satchel slung over his shoulder. Uh, the only suspicious person you've seen all day standing in front of you. Ask what he's doing in a fish factory. Sure. Watch your tongue. I'm after a wanted man, a tinkerer. But I could still find time to haul you into a cell. Uh, grunt and tell him that you haven't seen any tinkerers. Well, if you do see anything out of place, report it immediately. He'll slip up soon. Ah, uh, maybe this is Higba. That lunatic is not going to take another Magister. It'll be a pleasure to watch Magister Raymond purge him. Uh, wonder why they're hunting a tinkerer. He's wanted in connection with the disappearance of several magisters in this town. As soon as we asked him about it, he fled. Who knows what he's done with our divine brothers. Ask how they are sure this tinkerer is responsible. He was seen with the effects of one of our company. Not only was he behind her disappearance, he brazenly flaunted it in the tavern. We chased him to this factory, but lost him on the docks. Now, I have a patrol to complete. If you see anything, tell me. Uh, I don't think so, punk. All right, well, we can't steal anything in this place, except for maybe a couple of barrels over here, which have nothing. Unbelievable. Can we take this uh, portrait and sell it, maybe? Um... All right. Lagan... Lagan's Locker? Sounds like a terrible TV show. Lagan's Locker. Greb. Um... Maybe down the hatch? Hey, doggy. The dog sniffs the wooden decking. Like there's something wrong. Something's wrong. <laughs> something's wrong, and it's not right. Okay, uh, what are you doing? I don't know, but there's something wrong, and it's underneath the floor. Tell the dog you'll investigate if you can. Be careful down there, mister. You're not smelling what I'm smelling. Okay, apparently something smells wrong. Um, is it wrong because it smells like Higbud hiding down there? Or is it wrong because it's somehow unholy or something? Greb? The dwarf peers at an expertly dissected fish, 
gently poking its innards with his knife. Fascinating. Most fascinating. It's just fish. Oh my, I mean, no, uh, what do you want? Uh, what are you doing? I'm gutting fish, what else? Not that he's doing his work with a strange amount of diligence compared to the others. Nothing wrong with taking pride in your work. Roll your eyes and say that it's plain he's up to something and it's not fishmongering. The dwarf grimaces and points the tip of his knife at his handiwork. Whatever's wrong with these fish is causing a lot of hardship for a lot of folk. I want to figure out what's happening to them. See if there's anything that can be done. Ask him if he needs any help. Yes, as it happens. I need to see the effects of eating these fish firsthand. If you understand me. Okay. Say that you'll eat the fish if you'll uh, if you're sure it'll do you uh, do some good. Cast a skeptical eye over the fish on his work table and ask what it's in it for you. Sure. Do as I ask, and you'll be amply rewarded. I guarantee you. Okay, fine. I'll do it. Wonderful. Now, there's three samples that I wish to learn more about. Care to choose? Uh, sure. The yellow fish. The fish instantly churns your insides. You double over in pain. Fumbled on smelling, <laughs> on applying smelly. Really? <laughs> Jeez. A sudden vivid sensation of floating in darkness assails you. There's something in there with you. Something. Hungry and corrupt. You can't breathe. You can't breathe. Um. Okay. <laughs> uh, first off, I don't breathe. And did the narrator really have to stop like that? The dwarf suddenly drifts back into view, peering at you with fascination. Oh shit, did some giant worms come out of Fabrosi? How do you feel? Uh, I seem to have given birth to some giant blood worms. So I don't know, why don't you tell me? A stream of black bile suddenly erupts from your mouth and across the dwarf's boots. He doesn't even look displeased. Catch your breath and say you saw things, terrible things that you can't even describe. Say that you actually didn't feel a thing. Uh. Okay, well, that's not really going to be helpful for him. Let's just say that you feel chilled to the bone in a most unnatural manner. I'm sure any discomfort will pass shortly. Besides, I've learned a great deal from observing you. I'm in your debt, stranger. Ask what he learned from observing you. The dwarf puffs up his chest and proudly gestures to the fish. The fish is indeed malignant. Humans are affected by it in the same manner as other species. Uh, say that you're willing to try another if the reward is increased to match your efforts. Thank you, but no. I can only allow for one specimen per volunteer, or my findings could become flawed. The fish you ate is known as Yellow Ridgeback. Quite a cunning breed, often used in concoctions to increase alertness. But this one, touched by the void itself. Who is to say how such a creature might alter an alertness mixture? <laughs> Seek out somewhere that peddles alertness herb mixes. Adding these um, unique rich packs might make quite the impact. So, now my work must continue. As soon as I've got in my quarter of fish, of course. Farewell, stranger. Alright, fine. Um, then can we maybe get someone else to try out the fish Sibi uh, Losa is it an expertly fascinating oh my I mean no, uh, 40 what do you want uh they're dead the dwarf shakes his head with irritation before you're blocking my light go away okay fine um nothing wrong with taking pride in you the dwarf whatever's wrong with sure these fish, as it happens I need to see the effects of eating these fish. What's in it for me? Ask. You'll do it wonderful the red fish the fish instantly churns your insides everything turns black a sudden vivid sensation of floating in darkness. The dwarf suddenly drifts. How do you feel? A stream of black bile suddenly erupts from your mouth and across the dwarf's boot. I see. Speaking of which, I've learned a great deal from observing you. The dwarf pu The fish is indeed malignant. Humans are affected by- Can I try another one? The fish you ate is known as Crimson Bream. Quite a fast, vicious breed. It's often used in the creation of ferocity mixtures. But those use regular specimens, not this kind. Who is to say what might happen if you brewed a ferocity mixture with a crimson bream that's been touched by the void itself? The effects could be quite potent. Seek out somewhere that peddles ferocity herb mixes, but make an addition. One of these, um, unique breams. All right, fine. So, now my work must continue. Okay, Fane, now it's your turn. Let's have you, come on, guys, can you just get rid of the, uh, the thing here? Sure, let's make it rain. I shouldn't have used a rain scroll for that, but oh well. 
Okay, guys, we got rid of the uh, the bloodworms. We're fine. Fane, can you please talk to him now? Fascinating. Oh my! I mean, no. Uh, what do you want? Say that you recognize those incisions, the work of a healer or a scholar, not some fishmonger. With a small grin, the dwarf glances between you and his. Indeed, I am. They can close our schools, but they can't take away what I've been taught. Besides, there's still so much to learn. All right. Um, how did you end up here? Times are hard. There's not much gold to be made in scholarly pursuits. I can't ignore my first calling, though, especially when there's so much to learn. All right. Let's see if we can help. Yes, as it happens. What's in it for me? You'll do this it. Brown, the brown fish. The fish instantly churns your insides. Everything turns black. A sudden vivid sensation. The dwarf suddenly... How do you feel? A stream of black bile suddenly erupts from your mouth and across the dwarf... Saw terrible things. Or, nope. Um, your head feels like it's going to split open and your mouth tastes of ashes. But I'm sure any discomfort will pass shortly. Besides, I've learned a great deal from observing... And what did you learn? The dwarf puffs up his chest and... The fish is indeed malignant. My reward. Ah. Yes, of course, of course, but the fish you ate is known as the Umber Monkfish, a remarkably intelligent breed. In fact, its flesh is often used to create intelligence mixtures. Now this monkfish, one that's been touched by the void itself, who's to say how its flesh could augment an intelligence brew? It could prove to be most valuable. Find somewhere that offers intelligence brews, then add this monkfish sample. The effects could be most interesting. All right. So, now my work must continue. Assume okay, fine. I guess, do we need to actually... Is that like a part of a quest where we mix those things in? Or or are we, are we done with that stuff now? I guess we're done with that stuff now. But he gave us some stuff, didn't he? Right, the ingredients. Alertness, herb mix, ferocity herb mix, and the enlightenment herb mix. Alright, fine. I guess we'll uh, try to find a way to get those po potions brewed and see what the effects are. But that'll have to wait until the next episode. Alright, so for now, thanks for watching and have a good breakfast.